and welcome back, fellow adventurers, to Let's Play Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who voted on the previous video for uh, the romance choice. And the clear winner, uh, both from comments on my channel as well as a couple others who uh, sent uh, some votes via um, uh, Facebook, the winner is Josephine. And so we will be romancing her for this playthrough. Uh, so from now on, we will only flirt with her, and uh, we will take the option to pursue a romance when it comes up. Also, as you can see, I've changed my appearance. Um, this is actually uh, Warden Battle Mage armor. I thought it looked pretty cool, and it's got some good stats. Uh, since the last video, I had did a significant amount of playing. Uh, I've gone up at least another five or so levels and basically did a whole bunch of side quests that don't have uh, as much to do with the main story. I gathered a couple more agents as allies for the Inquisition um, and uh, yeah, basically just uh, did a lot of little things here and there uh, to help out various people with different reasons. The standard adventure fair kind of stuff. Um, but that has resulted, as you can see up here, in a power rating of 61. <laughs> I think I had something like 3 or 5 when, when the last video ended. Um, and also, the agents have done a lot of, uh, of their little side missions as well. Uh, but now we're going to kind of get back to the main story. First thing we're going to do is actually gather one more ally. For the Inquisition before we head off to ask the mages uh, for help. But before we do that, I'm going to do la oh, one last I run here through me. Haven and Before see if any of the companions have things to say. I will take these injury reports to we'll start off to with our romance choice, Joseph. Ah, Lady Trevelyan. May I have a moment? Sure. Yes, Ambassador? I'd like to discuss your parents. <laughs> A little sudden, but it's time someone made an honest woman of me. What? Very amusing. This is serious. I'd like to dispatch a courier asking the bands of House Trevelyan to align themselves with us. What are your thoughts? Should we approach your family for their formal support of the Inquisition? Hmm. Oh, so I guess we get to choose what the relationship with Aurora and her family is. Um, hmm. She was given away at a very young age, so there may not have been much time to uh, develop as much of a relationship as you know might be expected normally. Hmm. Well, while Aurora is agnostic, well, maybe we'll say that her parents are a little bit more devout. My parents are on a first-name basis with most priests in Ostwick, and I have a dozen cousins in the Chantry. When they hear I've been touched by Andraste, you'll have to stop them from giving you money. I'll take that as a yes. Valroyo has noted your lineage. It gives the Inquisition some legitimacy, although not so much as we'd hoped. Why not? You are from Ostwick. Orlesian nobles consider the Free Marches somewhat... quaint. Even though I'm a mage, that doesn't give them pause. For not an unfamiliar sight. Mages from noble families are given more leeway. Besides, Ostwick Circle had a reputation for being rather sedate. You've never been bored until you've lived in a tower of studious, well-behaved mages. Even our circle's fool was quiet. Everyone just... left. No wonder the people's faith in Templars has been shaken. Hmm. I'd say Aurora probably stayed out of the Templar's way most of the time. The Templars left me alone. I extended them the same courtesy. I'm sure it was for the best. <laughs> a 
This place is no bastion of civilization, uh, not like the Circle. I hope you don't find the living conditions in Haven too drastic for someone of your station. This can't be what you're accustomed to, Ambassador. One adjusts. I stay busy. It helps take my mind from our surroundings. And the cold. And the wildlife. And the lack of civilization for miles around. <laughs> <sighs> Why anyone lived here before we found Andrasis' ashes, I cannot imagine. Don't worry about me. Haven's more than livable. Really? If that is how you feel, I'm pleased to hear it. Until next time, my lady. Let's see if she has anything else to say. Good day to you. Uh, I don't think we went through these questions last time. If we did, I, I apologize. Tell me how you came to work for the Inquisition again. I'd been considering leaving my post in Antiva for a new challenge when Leliana recruited me. There's such unrest in Thedas, and the Inquisition seems a promising method to stop it. It's to everyone's benefit if we prevent the Mage Templar conflict from spreading further. So was it the prospect of stability that drew you here? The full impact of the Mage Rebellion has yet to be felt, and that was before the death of the Divine. The violence must be curbed before we see it turn to full-scale war. Bringing the Mage Templar conflict to a head could be the only way to resolve it. Surely we can find a solution that doesn't leave all of Thedas in ruins. How do you and Leliana know each other? We moved through similar circles in Norlay. I believe we actually met in Val Royale. Leliana was quite an accomplished player of the game by then. What exactly do you mean when you say, the game? Ah, forgive me. The game refers to the slow duels of influence among the noble and powerful of Orlay. It's a rather light-hearted name for the matter, but Orlesians are fond of playful touches. Tell me. Do you believe I was saved by Andraste at the Temple of Sacred Ashes? I should much like to believe so, Your Worship. The miracles Andraste performed were so long ago, they're difficult to picture. If it were truly her and the Fate who saved you, well, in any case, many already believe you walk in the Maker's Light. What business are the Montilliers in, exactly? We began as merchants. My ancestors founded the first trade route to Rivain. We once sent entire fleets across the Waking Sea. But not anymore. Ah, no. Uh, these days, our vessels are a touch more modest. And since we're going to be pursuing a romance with Josephine, we're going to find out more about her family history and how it relates to what's going on with her family nowadays as we move along. I'd swear our families have met before. Perhaps. Everyone of distinction in the Free Marches attends Lady Trevelyan's summer balls. Great Aunt Lucille always did love a party. I don't recall seeing you at any of them. I was less than sterling company when I was younger. Modest in temper, bold indeed. You know the Trevelyan family motto? Heraldry is a passion of mine. What did you do before coming here? I had the great honor of serving Antiva's crown as ambassador to Orlay. I'm also first in line to become the head of House Montillier, though my siblings attend to our mercantile affairs. How strong are your past loyalties? I would never have given up my position if I did not intend to fully commit to the Inquisition. We cannot fall back on borders. Antiva is as threatened as any country by the rebellions. If anything, the alliances I forged there may help our current cause. Do you think the Inquisition will continue after we seal the breach? If we prove ourselves by healing the breach, people may turn to us for other things. Protection, counsel, justice. The Inquisition offered these ones to those in need. Let's speak later. Another time. All right. 
Honestly, I don't think I have any monster pieces to drop off. If you off. find anything, nope. please bring it in. I was doing that several Being times uh, off camera. There was no word for heaven or for earth or sea or sky. All that existed was Okay, next up is Solus. Closing the breach is our primary goal, but I hope we might also discover what was used to create it. Any artifact of such power is dangerous. The destruction of the Conclave proves that much. You don't think whatever created the explosion was destroyed in the blast? You survived, did you not? The artifact that created the breach is unlike anything seen in this age. I will not believe it destroyed until I see the shattered fragments with my own eyes. Anything with that kind of power is bound to show up sooner or later. Liliana's people have scoured the area near the blast and found nothing. Whatever the artifact was, it is no longer there. In any case, did you need me for anything? What do you know about the Fade? A great deal, from my wanderings. There are few hard facts, but I can share what I have learned. I'd like to know more about the Breach. Simply put, it is a tear in the veil between this world and the Fade, allowing spirits to enter the world physically. Small tears occur naturally when magic weakens the veil, or when spirits cluster at an area that has seen many deaths. But your mark allows you to exert some control over the Breach. That means it was created deliberately. I'd like to know more about the Veil. Circle mages call it a barrier between this world and the Fade. But according to my studies in ancient elven lore, that is a vast oversimplification. Without it, imagine if spirits entered freely. The Fade was not a place one went, but a state of nature like the wind. I don't know if I can imagine that. Try. Imagine if spirits were not a rarity, but a part of our natural world. Like a fast-flowing river. Yes, it can drown careless children, but it can also carry a merchant's goods or grind a miller's flour. That is what the world could be if the veil were not present. For better or worse. Hmm. Methinks that uh, Solus might have a preference in that uh, question. Whether or not the veil is good. I'd like to know more about demons. Your circle says that demons hate the natural world and seek to bring their chaos and destruction to the living. But such simplistic labels misconstrue their motivations, and in so doing, do all a great disservice. Spirits wish to join the living. And a demon is that wish gone wrong. Is there a way to coexist? To live with them, if not in peace, at least without such active confrontation? Not in the world we know today. The Veil creates a barrier that makes true understanding most unlikely. But the question is a good one, and it matters that you thought to ask. We'll talk later. Goodbye. There's basically two ways that um, you can unlock new dialogue right. options with all your various companions. When you spend your days, one you is to um, just progress in the story and go through the main quests. After each main quest, often companions will have more to say, if nothing else, just to comment on the results of the uh, just finished quest. Or the other way is to gain their approval. And as they get more approval, then they'll get more dialogue options that you can use. Ready for waiting. Let's see, I think we already did these, so I think we're good for Sarah. I'll be back if I need you. Go on. Bard is singing the uh, main theme tune of the game right there. How you doing, Varric? Anything new to say? Need something? Can I ask you something, Varric? You want to talk about me? <laughs> I'm flattered. Also inclined toward extravagant lies. Mm, nothing new there. Thanks, Varric. No problem. Need something? Let's see, we already asked about Hawk, Valerian. I oh, think we're good. Carry on. Oh, skipped over Liliana. 
Also, uh, speaking of the romance, this is actually the first game where you can romance people who are not your active companions so in the field. The uh, in other words, fighting outside. along your side. Because both do, neither Cullen nor Josephine ever actually follow you into battle uh, when you go out and explore. It seems Blackwall knows nothing about the disappearance of the Grey Wardens. It's a disappointment. I am, however, glad that he is with us. Even if he was not what I expected. He seems to be a good man, and his experience will be an asset to the Inquisition. <sighs> As for the other Wardens, I suppose we will have to keep looking. They called you the left hand of the Divine. That they did. What of it? What is the point of an Inquisition? Justinia would have started the Inquisition if the Divine Conclave failed to restore peace. She hoped that with enough support, we could challenge the very tenets of the Chantry. She wanted the Chantry to treat the mages fairly. But sometimes I wonder, why stop at mages? The Chantry has committed many injustices. If we're going to change it, why not change the whole thing? It's just a thought. None of this will be possible if we fail. I'm sorry she didn't live to see the Inquisition. So am I. I could use the left hand of the Divine at my side out there. Every agent out in the world is my eyes, my ears, my blade. Wherever my people are, I am also. Coming with you, leaving my post, would blind and bow me. Do you see? What exactly does the left hand of the Divine do? A Divine always has enemies, and Justinia had more than most. I protected her. I watched, had an ear to every door. I identified threats, and I dealt with them. So, um, after speaking with Cassandra about being the right hand of the Divine, it seems like the right hand of the divine is the offensive one and the left hand uh, which was Liliana is more of the defensive one. Why did Justinia have so many enemies? There were many who felt she was unfit to be divine. She had a past, a worldly life. Unlike many she wasn't given to the Chantry as a child. She chose it and somehow that made her unworthy and because they thought she was unworthy they wished her harm. You still haven't told me what you did, exactly. I handled difficult situations that couldn't be resolved through more delicate means. <laughs> Always choosing her words carefully. We'll talk more later. Those of you who remember how Liliana talked in the original game, you can tell how much she's A changed over the last... Listen, I'm not saying that the Chantry doesn't do good work, <clears throat> but there's more to life than singing and praying. Okay. Next up. I think. Got the door again, Blissa. Don't know how it keeps breaking. Oh, uh, wait a minute. So this. No, it's outside the gate. A case. scout in the hinterland yeah. saw the Herald Pondra. The rest should be outside Did the gate. See if Iron Bull has anything, or the Iron Bull, sorry, has anything more to say. Can I help you? Nope, he doesn't. See you later, Bull. See ya. How about Krem? What can I do for you? Iron Bull said the charges were at my disposal. Do you have any suggestions on how to use them? Nothing jumps out at me. If I come up with any ideas, I'll let you know. I'd like to know more about the Iron Bull. The Chief. First time I met him, he saved my life. I never thought I'd work for a Canary, but he grows on you. He's not like any commander I've ever worked for. That's for damn sure. How's Iron Bull as a commander? If you know what you're doing and hold up your end, he's easy. He doesn't accept any less. If he keeps us alive, he leads from the front, and if you've an idea that'll win the fight, he listens. I've seen bands whose captains had to prove they were swinging the biggest sword. Well, isn't like that. The judges might give him more lip than you'd expect, but every one of us would lay down our lives for the big ass. Hmm. How did a Tavinta soldier wind up in a Kunari spy's mercenary company? 
I wasn't a soldier at the time. I was in some trouble, trying to flee to Vinter. A tribune and his men caught me in a border town tavern. They meant to make an example of me. Bull killed them. Gave up his eye doing it. Patched me up and asked if I was looking for work. I've been putting up with his jokes ever since. That's how he lost the eye? Yes. The guards had me on the tavern floor when Bull came inside and yelled for them to stop. One of them saw trouble coming and figured he'd finish me off. The guard had a flare. Bull put himself between me and the blow. They can't, idiot. Didn't even know me. Is it strange to work for a Kunari? He hasn't tried to convert us to the Kune, if that's what you're asking. The Bull's charges don't care who you light a candle for, so long as your shield stays up. If he hadn't told me he was Ben Hasrath, I'd have thought he'd left that life behind. I didn't expect he'd tell you all that he was a spy. Not the whole band, but those who've been around long enough to trust. He figures most of us would find out sooner or later, and it should come from him. Eyes to eye, he says. It's never messed up a job. He just writes letters back home. Lots of the boys write letters back home. We'll talk later. Oh, so we find out how Iron Bull came to just have one eye. Now that we've got better maps, it was for an act of compassion as well. Fine, forget I said it. Where's Blackwall? I've been meaning to thank you. There are a hundred things that need your attention. You didn't have to take the time to help me, and yet you did. If the history you pursue benefits the Wardens, then it was worth it. You've proven yourself to be an honorable woman, principled. A great admiration for you. And I've never been more certain in my decision to join you. There will be opportunities for us to do even more in the future. Then I look forward to it. What do you think of the Inquisition? You already know what I think of your forces. I'm not sure what else there is to say. Yeah, I guess we asked him that already. Yeah, I think we did. We should return to our duties. As you wish. You are, after all, in charge. Um, one of the things he was referring to is that uh, I've been helping him reco recover here and there little pieces of uh, ancient uh, warden encampments, like banners and stuff like that. That was one of the side quests I was doing. Um, although, one of the things that... Uh, we're going that. Bleh, let me try again. <laughs> one of the another one of the things that he's asked us to look for, though, does pertain to something that I'd like to do on camera. So I haven't actually finished his particular quest yet, but I will be doing that eventually. Hey, Cullen. Did you need something? Is there anything I should know? The Lord Seeker's actions are a mystery, but the Templars will aid us. They cannot sit idle while the breach remains. Colin does really want you to support the Templars. But as I said before, you can only end up choosing one, unfortunately. I should get to know you better. We are working together, after all. What would you like to know? All right. Where are you from? Huh. Strange that it brought up a codex. <laughs> oh well. I'll scroll through this. Ferelden near Honru. I was transferred to Kirkwall shortly after the Blight. This is the first I've returned in almost ten years. Varric's from Kirkwall. Did you two know each other? I knew he was friends with the champion of Kirkwall, but little else. We've spoken more since I joined the Inquisition, largely at Varric's insistence. Apparently, I spend too much time with a serious expression on my face, and it's <laughs> bad for my health. 
He does look pretty dour most of the time. You haven't seen Ferelden in ten years. Are you glad to be back? I was not sorry to leave at the time. I did not expect to return. Now, between the Divine's murder and the breach, I've arrived to find nothing but chaos. You were in Ferelden during the Blight. Did you fight Darkspawn? No. I was stationed at Ferelden's Circle Tower. The Circle had troubles of its own. I remained there during the Blight. What happened at the Circle Tower? You who survived the Blight have fond memories of that time. I would prefer not to speak of it. What was Kirkwall like? While I was there, Canari occupied and then attacked the city. The Viscount's murder caused political unrest. Relations between Majors and Templars fell apart. An apostate blew up the Chantry, and the Knight Commander went mad. Other than that, it was fine. <laughs> what happened between Kirkwall's Majors and Templars? You were at the Conclave. You must have heard people speak of it. Yes, but you were there. There was tension between Majors and Templars long before I arrived. Eventually, it reached a breaking point. There was fighting in the streets. Abominations began killing both sides. It was a nightmare. What happened then? The Templars should have restored order, but Red Lyrian had driven Knight Commander Meredith mad. She threatened to kill Kirkwall's champion, turned on her own men, I'm not sure how far she would have gone. Too far. So you opposed her? I stood with the champion against her, in the end. I should have seen through Meredith sooner. I'll let you return to your work. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Alright, last but not least, let's check in on Cassandra. Do you need something? See if there's any more options here. I have some more questions. Why am I not surprised? Tell me about your brother. I would prefer not to speak of Anthony. Another time, perhaps. Nope. Still won't tell us about a brother. I'll let you get back to work. All right. A learned child is a blessing upon his parents and on So let's go to our map here. As I was gallivanting around, I happened to stop by in Val Rayo, and I met a messenger who told me that someone was willing to ally with the Inquisition and wanted to meet with me. And it was the Imperial Enchanter, the official mage assigned to serve the Empress of Orlais. Vivian de Fer, the first enchanter of Montismard has extended an invitation to her salon at the Chateau of Duke Bastien de Gislaine. So let's go ahead and see what she has to say. Ooh, who should we take? Um, Blackwall. Take Varric. And Cassandra. Let's go with that. I hear elegant music. Lady Trevelyan of Ostwick, representing the Inquisition. What a pleasure to meet you, my lady. Seeing the same faces at every event becomes so tiresome. So you must be a guest of Madame de Fer. Oh, are you here for Duke Bastien? Are you here on business? I have heard the most curious tales of you. I cannot imagine half of them are true. 
What have you heard about me? Some say that when the veil opened, Andraste herself delivered you from the Fade. Well, that seems to be the standard story. I'm not familiar with that name. I was invited here by First Enchanter Vivienne. Madame de Fer is a fond nickname the court has given Lady Vivienne. I've heard she finds it amusing. Which, of course, translates as the Iron Lady. I believe a nickname also given to uh, British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. I've heard very little about Duke Bastien. He hasn't been seen much at court lately. His business with the Council of Heralds often takes him from home for long periods. It can't be good for a man of his years. And of course, there's the civil war. Bastien probably wishes to distance himself from the actions of his one-time son-in-law. Tearing up the Dales in a foolish bid for power? It will end in disgrace for Gaspar. Everyone knows it. Some of those storytellers may have gotten carried away. But only for the best effect. The Inquisition is a ripe subject for wild tales. The Inquisition. What a lot of pig shit. Washed up sisters and crazed seekers. No one can take them seriously. Everyone knows it's just an excuse for a bunch of political outcasts to grab power. Oh, who's this brute? The Inquisition is working to restore peace and order to Thedas. Here comes the outsider, restoring peace with an army. We know what your Inquisition truly is. If you were a woman of honor, you'd step outside and answer the charges. My dear Marquis, how unkind of you to use such language in my house to my guests. You know such rudeness is intolerable. Uh, Madame Vivienne, I humbly beg your pardon. You should. Whatever am I going to do with you, my dear? My lady, you're the wounded party in this unfortunate affair. What would you have me do with this foolish, foolish man? <laughs> Filled with bluster. Um, yeah, he doesn't. He hardly seems worth it, doesn't he? I think the Marquis has seen the error of his ways. By the grace of Andraste, you have your life, my dear. Do be more careful with it. <laughs> I'm delighted you could attend this little gathering. I've so wanted to meet you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vivienne, first enchanter of Montsimard and enchantress to the Imperial Court. Is that Marquis going to pose a problem? His aunt is the Vicontess of Mont de Glace. Not a powerful family, but well respected and very devout. Alphonse will be disowned for this. It's not the first time he's brought his aunt disgrace, but I'm sure it'll be the last. And after such a public humiliation, I expect he'll run off to the Dales to join the Empress's war effort. Either to make a good end, or to win back a modicum of self-respect. Your salon has certainly exceeded my expectations so far. I'm glad to keep you entertained, my dear. I wanted to meet face to face. It is important to consider one's connections carefully. With Divine Justinia dead, the Chantry's in shambles. Only the Inquisition might restore sanity and order to our frightened people. As the leader of the last loyal mages of Thedas, I feel it only right that I lend my assistance to your cause. You see here the flirt option. Um, however, in this case, it doesn't matter what Inquisit uh, Inquisitor you choose to be. Um, Vivian will never accept any advances, and you cannot have a romance with her. What exactly can you do for the Inquisition? I am well versed in the politics of the Orlesian Empire. 
I know every member of the Imperial Court personally. I have all the resources remaining to the Circle at my disposal. And I'm a mage of no small talent. Will that do? <laughs> Does that mean you'd be aiding the Inquisition from the Imperial Palace? Ordinarily, I would be happy to serve as liaison to the court, but these are not ordinary times. The veil has been ripped apart and there is a hole in the sky. It is now the duty of every mage to work towards sealing the breach. And so I would join the Inquisition on the field of battle. You say you led the last of the loyal mages. Loyal to whom? To the people of Thedas, of course. We have not forgotten the commandment, as some have, that magic exists to serve man. I support any effort to restore such order. Ah, a traditionalist. At least in these times. So you're in favor of returning the mages to the Circle, then? Where else can mages safely learn to master their talents? We need an institution to protect and nurture magic. Maker knows. Magic will find neither on its own. What's in this for you? The same thing anyone gets by fighting this chaos. The chance to meet my enemy, to decide my fate. I won't wait quietly for destruction. Are you devout? What's your opinion of the Chantry? I was a great admirer of the late divine Justinia V. The Chantry, at its best, unites the disparate cultures of Thedas and looks after its most vulnerable. Had she lived, Justinia could have accomplished so much. You are aware that the Chantry hasn't sanctioned this Inquisition? The Chantry is leaderless. They're in no position to officially sanction anything. Besides, my dear, if there is one virtue the Chant of Light teaches us, it is forgiveness. Once the Inquisition has sealed the breach, I'm sure the new Divine will not care in the slightest about official permission. <laughs> All right. So Vivian will join the Inquisition and will have us another mage to fight with. The Inquisition will be happy to have you, Lady Vivian. Great things are beginning, my dear. I can promise you that. And that's uh, another one of the areas that you only go to once and you cannot go back to. I think we're going to be put back in Haven then. Yes. At this point, I believe Vivian can be found in the Chantry. So we'll take a few moments, see what else she has to say, and then we'll go to actually meet with the Mage Rebellion and see if they will help the Inquisition. Oh, by the way, I also, you can see I got a new staff. This is actually a lightning staff, so it complement, complements um, Aurora's abilities pretty well, as you will see. For she who trusts in the Maker, fire is her water. As the moth sees there light and goes toward flame. You came from the circle at Ostwick, did you not? Senior Enchanter Lydia was a dear friend of mine. Were you at all acquainted? Lydia was my instructor. She was almost a mother to me. I never met a wiser soul than her. I understand she was killed by one of her own students when the Ostwick circle rebelled. I think we both agree that this war must end. The war benefits no one. It must end. An order must be restored. If only the rebels saw things so clearly. Justinia's death has shattered the balance of power in Thedas. If it is not restored quickly, countless lives will be lost. Mages, Templars, innocent people of all kinds now look to the Inquisition to decide their fate. I'll try not to let them down. 
Failure is a luxury we cannot afford, my dear. For almost a thousand years, the world believed it was in the hands of the Maker. And now many believe you are the agent of his will. Whatever the truth is, that belief gives you power. And that statement gives a little hint into how Vivian deals with things. If that's true, then I'll put it to good use. I suppose we'll see. I've stolen enough of your time, my dear. Don't let me keep you. Yes? Is there anything I can do to help your efforts at restoring the Circle? After the Circles fell, their libraries were plundered by scavengers. A thousand years of recorded knowledge in the hands of bandits. It makes me sick to think of it. I've received news that some tomes have been located, if you are interested in writing this wrong. I'll look into it for you. If you can take care of this matter, the Circle would be in your debt. And that's basically yes. one of uh, Vivian's uh, side quests. It's similar to uh, Varix um, when he asked you to destroy the Red Lyrium. Uh, and it's basically kind of just go around, find certain things, neither fetch them or get rid of them. Uh, again, not super important to the story, just something that you can do as a side quest. I wanted to ask you about the Circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? You must have an opinion of the Templars after living so long in the Circle. Having opinions about Templars, my dear, is exactly like having opinions about mages or Navarans or men. I have known some who were impossible to endure and some who were utterly charming. I have suffered insults at the hands of those in the armor, but no more than I endured from nobles or tradesmen in Val Royaume. Personally, I have found the Templars a useful tool, skilled at keeping more unpleasant elements at bay. Vivian has a very nuanced view of things. If the Circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? The Circle is an idea, my dear, and an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. If you led all the loyalists, why are you only first enchanter and not Grand Enchanter? Grand Enchanters are elected, and since there are no first enchanters besides myself, no vote can be held. I could name myself Grand Enchanter, but the title holds no meaning now. When the circles are restored, that will change. I've never been to the Montsamard Circle. What was it like? A place of great history and tradition, with the greatest library of magical history outside of the Imperium. It was deeply involved in the great game, as you might expect of anyone living in Orlais. The mages there were quite competitive, but it was stimulating to be always pushed to exceed the abilities of my peers. How did we come to this state with the Circles in Revolt? You, my dear, are far too wise not to have realized that many of our colleagues live with their eyes closed. Safe from the world inside their towers, they thought only of the Templars and their own resentment. Kirkwall gave the world a reason to remember its fear of magic. A mage killed hundreds with a snap of their fingers. Across Thedas, a new tangible fear of magic grew. Commoners and nobles alike called out to the Chantry for protection. But the malcontents in the towers thought nothing of this. They cared only for themselves and for their anger at the new Templar restrictions. When a mage attempted to assassinate Divine Justinia again, the mages protested the investigation. The leadership chose to vote on independence based on the intolerable conditions imposed by the Templars, sparing no thought to the fact that magic was more feared in the aftermath of these attacks than it had been since Tevinter's day. So long as they had their freedom, they could care little for riots, angry mobs, or about pitting mages against each other. Are you familiar with Grand Enchanter Fiona? We've met. Before her horrendously ill-timed and selfish vote for independence, I thought her adequate at her job. 
In her dotage, she could not handle looking after the well-being of so many people. We would have done better to replace her years ago, to let her spend time gardening. No love lost between these two, it seems. Did they have cause to rebel? In the aftermath of their terrorist attacks? Was that really the most opportune time to break away? By all means protest abuses by the Templars. Just don't do it in a way that says mages support wholesale murder. By voting when they did, my colleagues all but declared war upon the ordinary people of Thedas. A war in which we are outnumbered a hundred to one. Well, that gives you a kind of idea of how many mages there actually are in Thedas right now. I thought the fighting was only between mages and Templars. Why are mages fighting mages? The vote for independence was carried by only a small margin. But Fiona chose to let the motion stand. Those who opposed a rash declaration of war against the entire free world had little choice. By breaking from the Chantry when they did, the rebels declared themselves in support of mass murder. Anyone who did not wish to support terrorism and the slaughter of innocents was forced to take arms against the rebels. See, I think that's that was all for the circle. Let's see if she yes. has anything else here. Ah, yes. I'd like to know more about you, Madame Vivienne. Whatever would you like to know? Your accent's not Orlesian. Where exactly are you from? I am from the Circle, my dear. One's country of origin rarely matters there. But if you must know, I was born in Wycombe in the Free Marches. I was sent to the Ostwick Circle, but I transferred to Montsimar while still an apprentice. Well, I wonder if these two ran into each other at some point then, even maybe when they were very young. I'm curious how a circle mage winds up a courtier. Nobody winds up at court, my dear. It takes a great deal of effort to arrive there. I caught the eye of Duke Bastien de Ghislaine, an advantageous connection that opened many doors. When the position of enchanter to the Imperial Court became vacant, I was able to secure it. You're married to the Duke de Ghislaine. <laughs> of course not, my dear. Don't be ridiculous. Marriage is the business of alliance and inheritance. I'm Bastien's mistress. Sounds like things get complicated. And what does the Duchess de Ghislaine think of this arrangement? We got along quite well. Duchess Nicoline and I used to host musical salons together. She was a great patron of the arts. She passed away from a fever a few years ago, the poor dear. What duties does a court enchanter have? I am tasked with providing assistance to the Empress on arcane matters. Most of my predecessors restricted this to lighting lamps and doing parlor tricks. In such troubled times as these, however, I provide political advice to Her Majesty on the subject of the Mage Rebellion. Okay. So let's go ahead and head out. We need to go back to Central Ferelden for this. So, yep, back to the Hinterlands. And... Ah, yes. And we need to pick a place. You can see that I've explored much more of the map than we when uh, I was on camera last. I think... Let's see. I think this encampment is probably close to where we want to be. Still be a little bit of travel to the north. But we'll head out there. Now this has to do with the mages. So we will take Vivian. And let's see. We'll take Solus as well. But we can't have all mages or else we're really not going to have a very well balanced party. So let's go with Cassandra to kind of help balance things a little bit. 